You know how there's that one pretty important rule in filmmaking? Don't show the camera in the shot. You know what doesn't give a damn about that rule? Mirrors. Most of the time they make specific shots like these impossible. But wait, if these are impossible, where's the camera? Well, turns out filmmakers found out a way to make cameras basically disappear and said screw you to mirrors in the process. Before I get into the video, I want to explain why I'm making it in the first place. So there's one mirror shot that I saw recently that had me totally stumped. It's this one from the first episode of Criminal United Kingdom. Have a little watch. I really wanted to work it out, so I thought, let's go break down some other mirror shots that we know a little bit more about and see if something lines up. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's dive into some pure movie magic. Let's start with Contact, probably one of the most famous mirror shots in existence, mainly because of how absolutely seamless and effortless it feels. It's seamless but totally bemusing at the same time. So how is it done? Let's break it down. So it's blue screen, but it's not as complicated as you might think. It's basically comprised of two different shots. The tracking back shot of the daughter running and the shot of the cabinet with the same actress pulling open the cabinet door with her wee little hand. The shot of the daughter is, is, is all real. It's where the daughter reaches the cabinet, the two shots become one. So how did it work? Well, what you're actually seeing is shot one being superimposed onto shot two where it has a blue screen instead of a mirror. Looking at the two individual shots from above makes the technique a little easier to work out. With shot one, the camera tracks Jenna Malone as she runs down the hallway into the bathroom and towards the mirror. In this shot, she's basically acting as if she's reaching for the mirror, when in reality, it's just a giant camera lens in front of her face. In shot two, they'd flip the camera around some 200 degrees. They'd get the camera tracking backwards to mimic the movement of shot one, call action and have our actor reach and open the cabinet. But for real this time, you combine the two, match their timing and boom, you've got one of the greatest shot transitions in film history. But is this what is happening in this shot? Well, we're this far into the video, so you tell me. This one's really cool. So the camera starts here and tracks all the way to the other side of the mirror. So what kind of witchcraft is being so publicly displayed here? Unlike contact, there's no VFX. In fact, this technique is essentially the same as the one used in that mirror shot from T2 and this mirror shot from Peggy Sue Got Married. What you're actually seeing as the camera moves is the shot transitioning from one side of a duplicated set to the other with an invisible cut spliced in there, very sneaky sneaky. And a duplicated set means a duplicated cast. When this character sits down, what you're really seeing is two cast members trying their absolute best to sit down at the same time, matching their movements to sell the idea that there is in fact a mirror there. 
And notice all the small touches throughout the shot to help sell the effect, like these photos stuck in the mirror that have their own reflected versions placed perfectly behind them. They've even matched this vine type decoration with its own double, not to mention all the props on the table. It's really impressive stuff. As for that invisible cut, well, it's no accident that this actor's head conveniently cuts the frame in half. Hmm, yeah, they've actually used her head as a stitch point to connect two shots together, allowing them to seamlessly transition from the fake mirror shot we started with and into the version of the set with real mirrors, so the shot can finish with the actor's real reflections. Also, that's Jenna Malone from, well, Contact. How has that happened? How, how did that... How's, how's the question that? is, is this what's happening here? Looking at this scene closely, the movements of each of the characters, they're too perfectly matched to their reflection. So unless we've got some cloned Wolverine type shenanigans going on here. It's definitely a no for me, dog. What's so cool about this technique is just how it does its thing like it's nothing. It's a, it's a lovely shot, but it takes some eagle eyes to realize it should technically be impossible. There should be a camera right here, yeah? Well, it's much simpler than you'd think. Yeah, you think maybe it's there's some blue screen involved, like in contact, or we've got some doubles doing their thing. No. They just built the camera into the wall, and then they just removed the lens sticking out in post. <laughs> Pretty simple, but uh, is this what is happening in our little mirror shot here? Well, let's find out. Although the shot here is locked off on a tripod, well, kind of locked off in a wall, I guess. Hey, you aspiring filmmaker, do you need something to keep your camera stable when shooting? No, not a tripod, you f In fact, f your tripod. You don't need that. What you need is something better. Introducing the wall. Never be stuck for a place to put your camera again. If you've got a wall, you're good. Just punch a hole in the closest vertical surface and you're good to go. It's the most convenient piece of gear you'll ever own. Oh my God, Tim. Ah! So we might be comparing a locked off tripod shot with a moving dolly shot, but when you put them side by side, there's no doubt that they share some visual similarities, which is why my gut was telling me that the technique they used in this shot had to be similar. But I still wasn't 100% sure. So I started doing a little digging. Cue montage. So I started where anyone in my position would, would start, IMDB. But there was nothing, no pictures, no videos, no nothing. I checked cast Instagram accounts and their posts from around the time of production. Nothing. I checked crew members, their socials. Nothing. Give me rent. All I wanted was a single BTS picture of that particular shot, a hint at the setup, but there was nothing. Nothing from the director, nothing from the DOP, the first assistant camera operator. No one had a publicly available photo. But just as the last ounce of hope I had began to fade, I see this credit for this BTS photo in an article on BBC.com. Okay, promising. So I follow the Jose trail to his website, to his Instagram account, and lo and behold, nothing. I had lost the will to go on. Food had lost all taste. Even this video where this man's dog poops at the beach and then rolls in the poop as his owner pleads with his four-legged friend to not roll in the poop, failed to make me laugh. Tell me what you doing, dog? 
job, man. That's the nastiest thing I ever seen you do. Is bring your ball. The shit gonna get on your ball. Bring it on back. Oh, boy. No, you making a mess. Oh, good night. No, crank that car up, girl. Crank that car. Give me a... So, I did a thing. I wrote up an email to a crew member credited as the B camera operator on the first episode that was shot in Madrid. And guess what? Nothing. Nah, just kidding. He, he replied. Jonathan Tyler, thank you. End montage. So how'd they do it? Well, it really is the force majeure technique minus the hole in the wall. So there's no blue screen, no, no doubles work in sight. According to Jonathan, it was a combination of well choreographed camera work and VFX. To quote Jonathan's reply, it was basically a paint out of the camera. What we did to simplify this was use a dolly with a stabilized head that I operated remotely. This meant that the paint out was just the equipment and the grip moving the dolly, all covered in black fabric kept the rotoscoping as minimal as possible. Rotoscoping as in manually tracing around the camera gear and the grip frame by frame, and then removing that from the shot to replace it with a clean plate of the wall. Really the most literal example of making a camera disappear. And it's a pretty cool example of a perfect harmony, really, between our B camera operator, Jonathan Tyler, cinematographer, Jamie Carney, and show director, Jim Field Smith, to help produce an almost faultless mirror shot. And one that sets up this dynamic between the two rooms in the show and the mirror between them pretty perfectly. Thanks for watching, guys. That was that one was really fun. I yeah, I <laughs> had a lot of fun. Um, until the next one, I'll see you around. No, you making a mess. Oh, good night. No, crank that car up, girl. Crack that car, get me out of here. I ain't taking that old shit and all out with me.